Good afternoon, everybody. Saturday, September 22nd, 2012. We're at Smith Vocational High School for Northampton Youth Football League action. Today, the Northampton Blue Devils will face the Springfield Wildcats. I'm Andrew Shelfo, joined as always in the booth by Rob Osberg. How are you doing today, Rob? Fantastic. It's another fantastic day for youth football here in we'll Northampton. One person for the chain gang. Anybody want to step up, give us a hand, folks? One person short for the chain gang. We've been pretty lucky this year with the weather so far. It's our third home game. Last home game at Smith Folk this year. Next one will be at the high school. But it's been a beautiful day, and we hope to continue it into the evening with some nice football action. The Blue Devils are going to start off on defense today. The Springfield Wildcats come in with a 1-2 and two record. The Blue Devils are 2-1. and one. And as always in the peewee level of games, there are no kickoffs. The Blue Devils will face the Wildcats at the Wildcats. Well, I don't know why they're lining up over there, but they should be lining up on their own 40-yard line. The referee is out there getting everybody straight. There we go. The referee is moving the Wildcats back to their own 40-yard line where they will start playing. You'll also notice that there are coaches out on the field to make sure that the players know what to do and that they're doing things the right way. So this Pee Wee team uh, had a great game last week, although my recollection is that uh, last week they did record their first loss despite a Herculean effort. They played a tough Agawam squad, and they came up on the losing end. That is that Wilbraham sure. they played last week? Was that... Uh, it was Wilbraham last week. Wilbraham last week? Correct. It was a tough Wilbraham spot. And I'm sure uh, Coach uh, Lamana had, had, we talked about this last week, a, uh, it was a very powerful offensive line for Wilbraham, so I'm sure the uh, team worked really hard on their line play over the week. Let's see if that hard work is going to pay dividends in today's game versus the Springfield Wildcats. First and ten for the Wildcats. They come out in an I formation with two wideouts split out on each side. Call the signals. There's a handoff to the up back. Finds his way up the middle. Met with a very stout tackle by number 22, Justin Rankins. Nice hit. Of about four. That was a real nice hit by Rankins. I also see uh, number 54, uh, Cameron LaFountain, is starting today into your line, and he assisted on that tackle. It was a solid game, though. That was a four-yard gain. I think the Wildcats would take those four-yarders on first down all day today. They, the Wildcat offensive line did a good job moving up a nice hole that led to the four-yard gain. So second here it is, second down and about six to go. Same formation. Coaches are making sure it was in the right place. Quarterback calls the signals, takes the snap. There's a handoff to the deep back. There's, There's a, a fumble. There's a fumble. And it is recovered. By Northampton. Trying to catch a number on who yeah, that was. 59, I think. It's number, well, that was Will Shaw with the tackle, the strip, he, and the fumble that recovery. Was, that was. He imposed his Blue will on that runner. Turnover. Blue Devils ball. In Wildcat territory, they take over first and 10 on the 38-yard line. Will what? Shaw is a fourth grader. This is the second year in the program, and his development from last year to this year has been remarkable. Well, He's that really was a, a force out monster there. play right there. Now, even though they're on the 38-yard line, they actually only have 28 yards to go to score a touchdown. The field at this level is 80 yards long. They move the goal line in 10 yards from each traditional goal line. 10 and 10 is 20 minus 100 makes for an 80 yard field. That's, that's some good math. Blue Devils come out in an I formation with one wide receiver split to the right. Tujan up under center, takes the snap. Look at the pass. He is hit oh, just before he throws. Boy, that's a complete pass. That was too bad because he had uh, no, number 83, Tyler Venos, open out Blue there on the wing. That would have been interesting to see. I like that as a first play, the, the pass second. play. It gives the, the defender something to think about. Yeah, but I don't like the blocking on the offensive line on that play. Now, pass blocking is a very different skill than run blocking. As you know, with pass blocking, players have to get up. They have to get in that good athletic position, and they actually start back paddling at the same time they fend off the defender. That's a, that's a very challenging skill and requires a lot of practice. Run blocking is a, is a thrusting motion, right? You know, you get low, you drive forward. Um, and as we saw, the pass blocking did break down in that first play. But I'm thrilled that Northampton is, is putting such plays into the lineup. Second and 10, Adrian calls the signals, takes the snap. There's a handoff to Rankins. Look for Zeru in the right. Nice stiff arm. Stiff arm's the first would-be tackler. Now he's up the right-hand side. Number he's still on his feet. He's got a first down and more. The 20, 
stepped out, down looked down to me like he stepped out at about the five yard line. Two, Let's see where the referee's the marking. The there is a flag on the right field. Is that is a block in the back. Let's see, I'm guessing that's against the Blue Devils. And that's unfortunate because I don't think the block in the back contributed at all to the effectiveness of that run. That was just an over-enthusiastic play on one of the Blue Devil blockers. Rankins did a lot of that on his own, and boy, I'd have to check the film on that, but I'm not sure that that block in the back uh, contributed at all to the success of that run. That was a, an amazing individual effort by Rankins, unfortunately nullified by the penalty. Heck of a run. He, uh, was for, he eluded the first two tacklers. Be a third and got past the third one, danced now. his way up the sideline, broke free for a while. Well, that was a, that was a place, second stiff second. arm, and not only stiff the first guy, but the first guy bounced into the second guy, so it was a, he got double effect from that stiff, stiff arm to break himself outside. He showed tremendous speed, then he showed strength, then he showed balance, and then he showed evasiveness down the sideline. They should still put that one on his highlight reel, even though that's coming back for penalty. So that makes it second and 16 because it's a spot foul. Blue Devils come out in their I formation again. This time the receiver's on the left-hand side. Tudrin, make sure everybody is set. And there's motion. So the Blue Devils are moving backwards once again. Are you sure? I think, I think there was motion on about two-thirds of our line. Obviously, uh, the coaches, uh, only half the players uh, heard the snap count in the huddle that time. Another penalty walks it back another five years. It's, right, always it's always frustrating. It's always frustrating when you're the guy that causes the motion, but when you're one of the nine guys that got to go in motion, even though you feel bad, you don't feel quite as bad. It was a, it was a group oops. So you're saying the nine guys are blaming the two guys who didn't. Of course, the center. I don't know if the center snapped the ball on that either. Well, after two backwards plays, it is second and 19 or so. Let's see what they can do. Tujan takes the snap. There's a handoff to Renner. He's got a lot of room on the left-hand side. Real lot of room. Cuts it back inside, and he's brought down after a gain of, let's say, 10 yards there. Nice Renner. run by Jacob Renner. So, Jake Renner, number 25. I know what you're going to say, Rob. I, I would love to understand that guy a little bit. So he, he runs. He's very fast. It seems like he has all sorts of room. And just as the tackler is starting to approach him, rather than running away from the tackler, he always turns it up into the tackler, yeah. which is very exciting if you like contact, but doesn't always seem like the best strategy if you're trying to gain extra yards. He did cut it back to the inside. It seemed like he did have a lot of room down that sideline. So, uh, you know, he's a, he's a little brother, and he, just, he must just love, you know, he just doesn't know what to do if he's not getting banged on as a little brother. So he, he was looking for some contact. Uh, he found some. Third down, on third down and 10. Trying to get something going here. Tudor takes the snap. There's a handoff to. It's to Rankins. Rankins. It's that time, those Hampton two would be tacklers. They were tacklers. They brought him down. They were. The That's going to bring up a fourth and long. So we have to point out a play. As, as skilled as uh, number 25 Renner is running, he unfortunately missed a block and his running mate got hammered. You know, one of the things that these players need to learn how to do in addition to ball carrying is when you're not carrying the ball, you need to be a blocker. And unfortunately, number 25 missed his block and he set number 22 Rankins up for us. Big, big loss, bringing up fourth and down, bringing a fourth down. And the Blue Devils have elected to punt, which on the peewee level means that they're going to move the ball 15 yards towards the Wildcats' side. So the Wildcats will take over on their own, where are they? 30 yard line. 25 yard line. 30 yard line. 30 yard line. No, that makes some sense. So I guess they moved it 20 yards. So even though the Blue Devils didn't really go very far, they had a couple of entertaining they, they plays went, there. They did go far. They just went far the wrong way on that on that series. Tough penalty, tough two two tough penalties and a, and a negative play. So the second time the Blue Devils are on defense, the Wildcats are in the same I formation. Quarterback takes the snap. That's a hand out to the got deep back who's got a big hole. He's got a lot of room on the left hand side. He could go all the way. He's got one guy to beat. Nice stiff arm. Beats that guy. 22, that's Rankins trying to bring him down. Finally He's brings him down, down at the six yard line. Justin Rankins. Boy, number one, Benjamin Self Selfrank, the safety, had the angle on the play and unfortunately the couldn't make the play at the corner and the Blue Devils. that Wildcat runner was able to turn it upstream and 
bring it very, very long game. That game went for 20 and another 35. That was a 55-yard run there. That was an impressive run, and, and it started the where, we, the where, we, where we began talking the today. It started with the line play. The they opened up a big, line, big hole for that guy. And he had a lot of room, and he ran as fast as he can. That brings up first, and we call it eight. First and goal to go from the eight-yard line. So the Blue Devils are their back against the wall. They're going to have to step up and stop them. First stop and them. 10 now for the Wildcats on our 16-yard line. And just, we got a closer look now at that Wildcats offensive line. They got a couple of big boys there on the right-hand side. They sure do. And that quarterback can hide behind them. Maybe look for a quarterback sneak here. Quarterback takes a snap. There's a hand up. There's, There's a fumble. There's a the fumble. Ground. A loose ball I the didn't field. see who got it. I think the Wildcats have kept it. I, th I think so too. That was just a bad exchange. The runner never had it. It kind of quarterback stuck it on his hip, and he couldn't no bring it in. The play. Maybe well, you know, we have a, we had a great angle Maybe to view that play, and, and and I think the runner took the right angle toward the quarterback. It looked like the quarterback took the wrong angle to the runner, resulting in a poor exchange, resulting in an opportunity for a turnover. Fortunately for the Wildcats, they were able to pounce in that ball and get a second and seven to go for a touchdown. Brings up second down. Quarterback, Second making down sure everybody's in the right spot. Wow, he can just really hide behind those linemen. Calls out the signals. There's a snap. There's a handoff to the deep back. That's a, another confusing play. He's brought Finally down brought down in the backfield by number 30, by number 30 Tyrese Cox. Nice tackle in the backfield. Tyrese Cox. Red Boy, great, great, great form. 30, Tyrese Cox with the tackle. So Great form on that tackle. I can't tell, Rob, if that quarterback was case. trying to fake it to the up back and hit it to the deep the back or if that was just a, a miscommunication. Either way, they went backwards. Uh, there was definitely some confusion on that play. That's all we know. It was either a terrific fake or he was confused. <laughs> well, it's just a pleasure to have somebody else confused other than us, as so often it's us. Third down, and that makes it about third and nine. Wildcats come out of the huddle. Third down now, Wildcats. Familiar eye Blue formation. Devil D is really putting the wall up there. Let's see what happens in this play. Quarterback takes a snap. There's a handoff. Uh -oh. Got past the first wave of tacklers. Not going to get past Not the by second Tudrin. wave of tacklers. Taken down by number Braden seven for Northampton. Stayed Got with the play the Braden whole way. Tudrin Got him out, of the, out on the sidelines. I'll Tudrin tell you number what, seven. number 75, Owen Shelfo did a heck of a job penetrating the uh, line in that and sending him back. What a great play by Shelfo there. Shelfo set that play backwards. Wasn't able to complete the tackle, but he drove him back and put him in position for Tudor and to finish it off on the sideline. And that's what we were talking about before, Rob. Sometimes it's the things that players do away from the ball that influence the play a lot. Absolutely. So now it's fourth down. And about Wildcats, that's about eight. They are trying, knocking on that door. Blue Devils so far aren't letting them in. You know, we're we're looking for that bend don't don't break defense that uh, has worked well for the Blue Devils so far this year. Coaches are taking a long time in this huddle. It's a big big play. Fourth down. Fourth down Wildcats. One player has to check, to double check. Up. Here's that eye formation again. One receiver split to the left, one receiver split to the right. There's the snap. There's a fake. Handoff. Quarterback's going to try to take it himself. Oh, what a great Brought play. Brought down again great by Tyrese Cox. Cox. Was not fooled on that at all. What a big time play. Big time play. Hey, coaches Lamana, Eric Matansky, Rich Salfrank, and Josh Tudor have to be real proud of number 30 there. We've been watching this team all year long, and Tyrese Cox was a little bit tentative the first couple of games. He obviously has found his comfort zone. His confidence was there. They made two huge plays on that defensive stance. It's wonderful to see. Here's a here's a player who came. I think he's a first year player. He came into the program and just said the first couple of weeks he was trying to feel his way around. He looked a little tentative. There was nothing tentative about that big time play by Cox. It's fun to tackle the quarterback in the backfield. And that was the play we were also anticipating. The quarterback keeping it for himself and trying to hide behind that big line. Well, you can't hide when you're going that way. You got to sneak in behind him if you want to hide. So first and 10 for the Blue Devils on their own 24-yard line. Tujan under center. He takes a snap. There's a handoff to Renner. Looking for some room on the right-hand side. He's got room. One guy to beat. He beats him with a stiff arm. Cuts. Nice, nice cutback. Cut. He's loose. Another
Marcus Stefan, 30, He's 20, He's going all the way. in for the touchdown. Fantastic run, Rod. That's a 72-yard run for Renner. And that was smooth. That was fast. That was evasive. That was explosive. 6 nothing Blue Devils. Great run by Renner. Some some key stiff arms there. Wow. The it was, was some great. jumping. There was some tap dancing. There was some power. There was some strength. It all resulted in six points. Great place, Renner. And also, that was that was a time where the cutback to the inside was exactly what he needed. Well, you know, he, he timed it perfectly on that play. Nice play. That's, that's a good way to, after a, a nice goal line stand on your first play after that, to just have a nice run for six. But what a momentum killer that is for the Wildcats, who had done such a good job putting themselves in position to take the lead. Bang! They lose the lead. 6 nothing Blue Devils. Now the Blue Devils will get ready for the point after, two-point conversion. Since there are no special team plays on Pee Wees, they're not going to try to kick it. Plus, kicking it would be really hard. So here they are lined up for the two-point conversion. you got Renner and Rankins in the backfield. I think we have a timeout. Is that a timeout? That was a or a, or a pause oh, at quarter. the end of the quarter. The referees just called the end of the first quarter. And we didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> but we never see it coming because we, never see a lot of things we coming. have no idea what, how the time is kept to this game. These are supposed to be 60-minute uh, running time games. Okay. I don't know. I'll go with that. How I, we have no idea. We get lost in the moment. We just focus on what's happening. So at the beginning of the second quarter, Blue Devils up 6 nothing. Looking for the conversion here. Now they're going to try the two-point conversion. That's the great run. We have that I formation behind Tudrin. And we have the wide out Tyler Van Ass. Van Ass put out to the left. There's a little coach equipment check going on in the Wildcats defensive backfield. And we all need to be patient for these kinds of things. Safety is very important. The last thing we would want is any player out there with his equipment not in prime working condition. Safety is something that's taken very serious in, these, in this league and in all the teams that we've seen spend the time and, and money to make sure that their kids have proper equipment, proper fitting uniforms, helmets with the right padding and the right materials. And sometimes those snaps are hard to get on and off. So here we go, two-point conversion. Tujan takes a snap. There's a handoff to Rankins, looking for some room to the left. There's that stiff arm again. He's trying to be the one guy to the corner. I don't know if he got he in or not. In. He did. He made it. Made it to the corner. Boy, Hamp is using that stiff arm very effectively today, aren't they? They must have been working on that in practice. We've seen a bunch know. of them going on today. After the two-point conversion successful try, it is 8 nothing Blue Devils. Hey, this gives us an opportunity to acknowledge the... Uh, Northampton Youth Football Board of Directors. We are very, very fortunate to have an enthusiastic group led by President Hank Gerard, and he's assisted by Vice President Ron Berenson, Secretary and Coach er uh, or Secretary Erica Lamana, Treasurer Diana Zinal, and they're all assisted by Manfred Melcher, Taryn Johnson, Patrick Dickens, and Brian Baseski. Big thank you to the Northampton New Football Board of Directors. Without their effort, and the effort is a year-long effort, we would not have such a top program for our kids in our community to enjoy. And they're all busy here on game day doing various things, from cooking the food, to selling the food, to making sure the referees get here on time, and even to manning the camera. This also gives us an opportunity to acknowledge our premium sponsors. They are the Northampton Police Relief Association, Calvin Coolidge Nursing Home, and Angel. Builders. Those are the high-level sponsors who contribute the most. That's some impressive timing right before the play. It's a handoff to the up-back who's winding his way through the backfield. Uh -oh. Now he's broken uh -oh. free. Uh -oh. I think he's going to go room. all the way. 30-20. Down to the goal. Pass. That's a touchdown. It right up. They get right back up on the board. Could it be we're going to have a track meet here today, Rob? I'm not quite sure what how what he happened there. He just sort of that yeah, was kind of a slow developing play, or he was just very clever in using his blockers. But he stayed behind them, kept his balance, kept his legs moving forward. Next thing you know, hole opens up, then a whole field opens up, and the end zone opened up. Unfortunately, I think you're right. There was a little bit of, of misdirection, let's call it, that confused the Blue Devils because I don't think they expected him to be getting the ball. He got through the hole, and the next thing we knew, he was in the backfield running for the score. That makes it eight to six. 
and well, and, and while they're so and while the Wildcats are setting up for their two point conversion, that gives us an opportunity to acknowledge the financial contribution of the gold major sponsors: Pioneer Landscapes Incorporated, MRW Connected LLC, Liquors Forty Four, Attorney Mark Tanner of Bacon and Wilson, Osberg and Associates, Florence Savings Banks, and the World War II Club. The Deuce. Two point conversion try for the Wildcats. Uh, some motion there. That's going to be a eight, an eight yard two point conversion try after the penalty is assessed. Well, Rob, we said before when the nine guys move all at once, you feel a little bit better. That time, only one guy. Only moved. We one. Know who it was? Going to cost the Wildcat a quick. Well, he, he also had to sell it. Once he moved, he figured he'd move all the way. That'll push him back five yards. The next level of sponsorship. That'll push him back a little bit. Our blue sponsors include Collective Copies, Newman's Construction, Goggins Real Estate, Wayland Pizza, Whalen Insurance Agency, Dove Business Associates, Valley Home Improvement, Weber and Grinnell Insurance, the blue. Quarterback's up under center, pulling out the table, takes the snap, look at the throw, balls up, incomplete. Yeah, incomplete. Nice play there by Tyler Benas. He was in a position the there to at least screen the receiver. The board, so the conversion is no good. 8-6 Blue Devils. Andrew, I have a prediction today, and my prediction is that these two-point conversions are going to be the difference in the game. It seems like both offenses have explosive capability, and success or failure on the conversions, I think is going to be the difference between success and failure at the end of this game. All right, we have that on tape. We can go back and check how well you did at predicting that. First down for the Blue Devils on their own 35. The referees are having a discussion with the Wildcats coaches. I don't really know what that's about. But the Wildcat coaches don't look too happy. And of course, they're just out there advocating on behalf of their team. Trying to get some clarification on some rules, I'm sure. Blue Devils break the huddle, come up to the line. The confab between the coaches and the referees is over. 35. Linemen check their splits. Tudrin up under center. Takes the snap. It's a handoff to Rankins. Up the middle. I think that's Renner. That's Renner, I'm sorry. That's five a yard solid game. Five yards. Just the Rankins brought And that was a good job by the offensive line to open up a nice hole. You know what? I actually think that was the, the that was the Jacob Renner on the run. I actually think that was uh, the most effective offensive line play we've had in this game. Some of those other runs were were bounced outside or just sheer speed. That was a hole that was opened was nice up. Hole. That was a really nice job. There was a pulling guard on that play and worked out well. You know what? There's one other level of sponsors that we have to acknowledge, and those are our family sponsors. And right after this play, we'll make sure we uh, let the folks know who these generous folks in our community are. Second down and five. Tudrin up under center, takes the snap. There's the handoff. And there's lots the of there's room, room out there. On the left -hand there's side. that block by Renner. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, nice tackle. Number 22, Justin Rankins on the carry. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, number 25, Renner did a great job blocking on that play. Unfortunately, there were uh, three defenders out there. Otherwise, that one was going for a long way. That was a nice block. Third and four now. So our family sponsors, Andy Morrison family, he's also the proprietor of Liquors 44 and has been very generous to this program over the years. The Mike Benedizic family, Mike is a longtime youth, youth football coach and in fact I think last year was his, his final year coaching. The Ron Berenson family, treasurer of the, the association, Jim and Diana Zino, in addition to being generous serving on the board, Jim is also in charge of Northampton Youth Football films. The Tudor family and the Burnish family, thank you very much all for your generosity. Tudor takes a snap. A handoff to Renner. Oh, and there's got lots of room. room on the right. The got room. He could be going. One, tackle, one guy to beat. Tackles. Brought oh, down at the 29 yard line. Complete. Number 25, Jacob Runner. Looked like I was wondering if he was going to pull out tackles. the stiff arm again there, but decided to do it with speed instead. Two and that, and that was the right decision. And you know what I really like about that run? He saw the green and he went for it. He sprinted the whole way. He didn't try to didn't try to cut. He didn't try to make it fancy. And as a result of that explosion of speed, he took that for about 30 yards. And you see, really, the strength of this Blue Devil offense is in its backfield. Rank, Rankins and Renner, they made quite a, a dynamic duo. Well, you know, if they keep having success on the outside, that'll allow them to get inside on some of those quick hits that are, can be so effective and so demoralizing to a defense. So that's a big first down 
first down and 10 the on the 29-yard line, which, as we know, is only 19 yards away from the goal line. Tugent breaks the huddle. Great running game today. By Offensive line checks their splits. On their field. They're getting losing on the outside. Tugent calls the really signals. Great yards. And he's keeping it himself. Looking for some room on the left-hand side. Coming out too long down the line, and he's swallowed by... A bunch of Wildcats. Yeah, that was that was a play that had some okay, option. Okay. You know, the, if he had turned that up quickly, he might have been able to burst ahead for three or four yards. That play was a little slow developing. Probably took uh, an inopportune angle out there, resulting in the no gain. Yeah, well, he, he just went down the line a little bit too long. He needed to cut that one upfield. You know, sometimes in going for the homer, you forget that there's a single or a double there to take, and he could have taken that four-yard run, and it would have been... Instead, I think he wanted to get outside and where all the glory is and go for the homer. It was set up perfectly, and his blockers out in front of him. Uh, and, yeah. Wildcats just did a good job. So second and ten. Children takes a snap. He's looking to throw. Throws it into traffic. That's I think he did a good job of actually middle. throwing it over his head. For number 25. Because that was Jacob had a lot of Wildcats. Yeah, I'm, I'm not number sure. Three, Even if number 83 of Venos caught that ball, he was going to catch it amongst a beehive of wild. <laughs> My just, goodness, there were there were six Wildcats were around that ball. There. And, uh, they were buzzing around that ball. I think the best outcome was what happened, that the ball was incomplete. He's third and 10 now, Northampton. You know, the challenge with passing is three things can happen. Two of which are bad, right? Absolutely. And at this level, especially given the challenge of pass blocking and the challenge of throwing a ball and and actually looking back into the sun to make a catch, it's uh, real challenging to complete those. That was a handoff to Rankins, and he was swallowed up by two Wildcat defense. So that brings up a fourth down for the Blue Devils. They are once again in that backward pattern that we saw in their first possession. Fourth and 15, and they're electing not to punt, so they're going to go for it here. So that was number 22, Rankins, who got shaken up on that play, and he's headed to the bench for a little bit of a uh, little bit of well-deserved R and R. Judging by the way he came off the field, we're confident that he'll be back in the game. They're going to be going for it. And as usual, Rob, we have uh, an EMT on the sidelines here to help out with any players who get shaken up. Tudrin up under center, takes the snap. Oh, it's a handoff to Renner. The ball's on the ground for a minute, but Renner is going to turn it into a gain. Two tackles, but he's Finally pushed out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Great run, but he's going to come up short. Yeah, that was a heck of an individual effort after a poor exchange. Uh, unfortunately, they would have needed 15 yards for a first yard. That was Wildcats a little bit too much to ask. The but there. the Wildcats are going to be deep in their own end of the field. And I think we have the Wildcat down. Apples going on. A lovely Wildcats ball, we first and 10. First and 10 for the Wildcats on their own 29 yard line after the Blue Devils turn it over on downs. First and 10 for We are in the second quarter here. The Blue Devils are up 8 to 6. Wildcats come out in their I formation with the split out, splits to the right and to the left. The linemen are studying their plays of the first, looks like. Okay, now we're ready to go. Everybody takes a snap. So hand off to the up back, looking for some room. Avoids one ta would be tackler, well, finally brought down. That guys. was Jacob, number number Jacob Renner with a nice ben tackle. Sal Frank was right in there. Jacob Renner was in there. And Ben Sal Frank as well with a good tackle. Sure was. Blue Devil jerseys. That was a, that was a super job by Sal Frank, and I love the hustle by number 65 Renner on that play. Maybe second down I think that was, was that Noah Renner, number 65? No, I believe that was number 25, Jacob Renner. Was it? Oh, yes. okay. Now, that was also a good job by the Wildcats runner. He did a good job of picking his way through the hole there. There was a gain of four, four or five. So that brings up second, second five, and Wildcats. five. Everybody's getting themselves settled here. Quarterback calls the signals. Takes the snap. That was a poor exchange and the quarterback dropped it and then well, wisely the fell down on it. So that's uh, no gain there. And I also see out there playing defensive line there, Joseph Lamana, the coach's son. This is his first year playing. And well, I've been to a lot of practices. He's an enthusiastic player out there on the hey, field. Hey, let's do a let's do a player profile. Number four to six out here in the right corner. That's Jonathan Rodriguez. He's a third grader. These are third and fourth graders. He's at Jackson Street School. He loves to read. He, and although he was a soccer player, we know for sure he's thrilled that he made the change over to football this year. They yell at you if you're tackling soccer. Here they give you a pat on the back. They sure do. 
third and five. I'm going to say this is a, a kind of a big play because if they stop him here, they're probably going to punt. The quarterback looks for someone to hand off to, doesn't see anybody, try to find oh, someone to throw to, and that gave that enough field. time for, that was number That was Renner. That was Renner, who said, I've seen enough of this. I'm going to take care of it myself. Come in, comes play. in, tackles him for a five-yard loss. We just got the two-minute warning. There are two minutes left in the first half. It's fourth down for the Wildcats, and I haven't figured out. I think they're trying to decide if they're going to punt or not. They're on their own 25-yard line. Yes, they are going to punt. So that'll bring the ball 15 yards down the field, and the Blue Devils will take over around their own 40-yard line. That was another good defensive nope. stance by the Blue Devils there, Rob. It sure was. Hey, this gives us another chance to do a player profile. I see running onto the field to anchor that offensive line, number 59, Will Shaw, who made that big play earlier. Will is a fourth grader. He's, uh, I understand he's also in Owen Shelfo's class. Is that correct? That is correct. They and they're are. at Jackson Street School under Mrs. McHugh. Is that right, Ms. McHugh? Ms. McHugh, the new teacher at Jackson Street. You know, Will, he's one of those kids whose favorite sport is whatever sport he's playing. Gotta love that. First of fall, that would be football. He's a football guy, so he's loving football now. I know he's a very talented baseball player, and most importantly, he's a kid that his parents are very proud of. Will's just a super nice kid, and we love having him in our program. Tudrin takes the snap. There's the handoff to Rankins, Rennert. who's back in the game. He's brought down Taken down. Back That's a big loss. That was about an eight-yard loss. Read that play to pick him up just the right. So these plays that we've been seeing, the running plays, Rob, that are you know, going outside left, Picked outside right, I think the Wildcats are wise to that deal. now. You know, I'd like to see some quick hitters, just, a, just an old QB sneak right up the middle or a quick dive. Something something, something inside the tackle, up. something that's uh, you know timed and snappy. Yeah, these players and the coaches, too, they learn from every play. And you got to mix it up, keep them on their toes. That'll bring up a second down, and let's call it eight yards to go. And we are, we are... The coaches are in the huddle, working with the players to come up with the play. Referees blow the whistle to start the clock. We are again within two minutes left in the first half. We have no clock up here on the on the booth. No idea how much time is left. They break the huddle. Children comes up. Second and one. Under center. I formation behind him. Calls the signal. Takes the snap. There's a handoff to Renner. Trying to bust it out to the outside on the right. Now he's trying to cut it up the middle. Tackle. Breaks one tackle. Gets back to the... He's still moving. Oh, he's still on his feet. It's like a bulldozer out there. Dancing Jacob for Renner about a nine-yard game there, Rob. Nice well, we were there. watching him dance, but so were the Wildcats, so were the Blue Devils. That was Renner running. That was about 20 people watching Renner and people taking turns taking shots at him. But we are late in the second half, late right in the first half. Hampering a little bit of a offense. hurry up offense because the time is... Oh, he's got lots of room out there. there on the left hand side. One guy to beat. I think he's going to make it. He did it. In for the touchdown. What a half. What a half. Renner's having on both sides of the ball. And that was a, a, a big fist bump by Coach Lamana, who was happy to see that play. So, so far, runner right, runner left, Rankins right, Rankins left has been the Blue Devil offense. You know, here's one of these real important two-point conversions as we're drawing near the end. And in fact, I think this is going to be the last play of the half. In fact, I saw the referee on the side give a tip of the hat, which suggests that after this play, it will be halftime. If it is the end of the half, that was a heck of a way to finish the half. It's actually the same way they finished the first quarter with a, a run, a, a long scoring run. This is a huge play. And here we'll give them a, uh, a but the, it's eight to six. It'll make it sixteen to six. So that'll be three scores, right? That'll it would take three. It would take two more scores for the Wildcats to take the lead. This is a huge play right here. So Tudrin comes up under center, makes sure everybody's all set, takes the snap, handoff to Rankins, looking for some room, dances to his left, he spins around. Ooh, finally he brought, brought down. down. I don't think it's gonna be Once he was wrapped up around his legs by the Wildcats, he wasn't going to go anywhere. Unsuccessful yeah. two-point yeah. conversion. Yeah. At halftime, it is the Blue yeah. Devils 14, Wildcats 6. 14. Okay, we're getting ready to start the second half here at Smith Vocational High School. Northampton Youth Football League Pee Wee Division action. Their Blue Devils are leading 14-6 over the Springfield Wildcats. 
and halftime gave us a good opportunity to test out some of that good food at the food booth, Rob. It's always fantastic. The food is uh, results from the generous donations of parents and friends of Northampton Youth Football. We really appreciate it. It's because the food is made with love, Rob. That's the extra special ingredient. That was a really interesting, exciting first half for both teams. There are a number of big plays on both offense and defense. We saw explosive, explosive offense. We saw some great tackling. We saw some untimely penalties on both squads. A few uh, few turnovers. We pretty much had everything in that first half. Not, not unexpected when it's third and fourth graders out there, and that's what these folks are. This is a very difficult game. It requires lots of determination. It's a tough game, and it's all about timing and coordination, and it's a real challenge for these third and fourth graders and they do a great job. Tudor takes the snap. There's a handoff to Rankins. Looking for some room on the left-hand side. He got tied up with his blocker, who was supposed to be a little bit up, more out in front of him. That was Renner. Uh, that was a gain of maybe two yards. But what I, what I like about that play, though, is is after missing a key block early in the game, Renner's done a nice job out there looking for looking for people to hit. He's looking to do his job not only as a runner, but when he's put in the role of blocker. And even though he sort of they got tangled up, you could see that he was out there looking to make a key block. That's an important thing for these kids to learn because there's yeah, 11 players and there's only one ball. Six. Everyone can't carry the ball on every play. So you have to do other things like you know, and And we, we had an opportunity to watch the, the film of the uh, seniors game. The seniors lost their first game last week. And one of the key problems is they didn't get big blocks from some of their uh, running backs and wide receivers in those key plays that, that could have opened up some some major holes and really changed the outcome of that Second game. Ten down Northampton. Second and ten. The referee is just lining everybody up the right way. Because just as we see it with the coaches of the field, the referees are involved in the instructional part of the Yeah, this program. is a, this is a collective effort. Tujan takes a snap. There's a handoff to Renner. And he's, he's got, got a lot lots of room. Right. Let's see, there's that stiff arm we he's saw in the first half. Won't got, got it beat. He cuts it up to the inside, runner. runs into his own player. Brought down by and finally brought down. Springfield. Now, Rob, I know what you're going to say. But I don't know why he cut it back inside. Uh, I'm not quite sure. You know, even if he had faked inside and then cut outside, I think he would have been gone. But that was a, still a great run. It was a great run. And, and Noah Renner, number 65, did a good job of getting downfield. And he was doing what you were saying, Rob. He was looking for someone to block. Unfortunately, he just ran into the ball carrier. Still, that's a first down after a gain of about uh, 25 yards. He got about 70 yards on the ground. Bring up first and 10 for the Blue Devils. They are on the Wildcats side of the field. Or the Wildcats 41 yard line. And that means there's 31 yards to go for another Northampton touchdown. The Blue Devils do lead this game 14 to 6. A TD here would really make it difficult for the Wildcats to come back. Tudor up under center, takes the snap. There's the handoff. That time the Wildcats, they were determined on that one. They tackle them in the backfield after a loss of five. You know, the Wildcats are particularly impressive in their ability to. You didn't get anywhere that Get way. through those it's holes, and if we, and if our timing's off just a little bit, boy, those plays just go for a loss consistently. We need to do a little bit better job with our interior blocking. You know, interior team. blocking isn't just about making the block; it's about communication with the other players. And even though in the, at this level, defensive players are forced to line up directly across from the offensive player, that's still an opportunity once the ball stab for the defensive players to cut move back and forth to switch positions, and that seemed to cause some confusion on our line, and the result was a four-yard loss. Second and 14 for the Blue Devils. Tujan takes the snap. There's a handoff to Renner, looking for his room on the outside. There's that stiff arm we saw so successful in the first half. Another one, still on his feet. Guy, Wildcat has him by the shirt, holding him up, finally brought down. After a gain of, uh, that's about 10 yards. And you know what, the, you know, we, we, I was very much focused on the interior blocking on that play, and it was outstanding. The Blue Devil offensive line held back the surging Wildcat defense. That gave Renner an opportunity to bounce outside, picked up about 10 yards to bring up a very make of third and four. Super job on the Blue Devil. That was also some determined running like we've seen all day from Renner. You know, he just didn't want to, he wasn't going to be brought down by one guy. You know, number 67, Aiden Peterson is coming off, and he's one of the guys who did a great job on that play, and this gives us an opportunity to uh, give a, do, a pro, player pro, do a player profile. He is a third grader. He's one of the younger players in the program. He's at RFK Finn Ryan Road School. He loves Jim. What a surprise. He's also a karate guy. Don't be messing with Aiden Peterson. Third down. Tujan takes a snap. There's a handoff. Met in the backfield. 
the Wildcats trying to take the ball away from Rankins. That play about a three wasn't loss. really very successful. No. And a great game by Renner, but a put right back with a loss on that. That's going to be fourth and about seven, Andrew. Fourth and seven, but they're on the field side, well, so I think they're going to go for it. Let's see. Why not? Back about five yards. Well, some personnel changes. Could they be actually punting? Yes, they are punting, Rob. Wow, that's an interesting decision. D comes on the field. Wildcats offense comes on the field. So with the punt, the ball gets placed at the Wildcats 24-yard line. And you'll notice again that there, there wasn't actually a punt. There was just an advancement of the ball down the field 15 yards from the last spot. I guess the coaches are thinking that the defense has been doing an outstanding job today. Why not let them continue that? Pin the Wildcats back. Uh, my only comment there is uh, the Wildcats have either been great or they've been awful. In other words, the plays have either gone for 40 yards or negative four. So whether they start from the 20 or from the 30 or the 40 doesn't seem relevant here. It's just a question of whether we are successful in defending their big hits. Well, we'll see if the coach's decision is the right one. The Wildcats the break Wildcats. the huddle. The tackle giving the guard some friendly shoves to get him in the right position on the offensive line. Quarterback makes sure everybody's set. You can see the quarterback back there? There, there he is. There he okay. Is. Okay. Takes a snap. There's a handoff to the up back. <laughs> a little bit of a dance in the backfield there with Chevy Wall. Defense is right in there again. That was Chevy Wall, number 41, number did a great job bringing him down. He was helped there by Ed Sarafin, number 68. The tackle. Hey, Chevron's a fourth grader over at the A.N.T. Dumphy School in Williamsburg. His favorite subject is math. We're thrilled to have some of these players from out of town. We have a Braden Tudor's from Hadley. Chevron's from Eddie Sarafin, number 68, with a tackle. Williamsburg. That's right. And he, uh, his best buddy is his big old 120 pound Newfoundland do dog named Sophie. I think uh, at 120 pounds. He'd have to play the line in this league. Yeah, I think so. And he's probably Second bigger than, no, than Chevy. Second and 11. Eye formation behind the quarterback. Takes the snap. Looking, whoa, there's a little kind of pitch. And, and there he all is over again. Him. Wall and, Tudrin. Wall and Tudrin. Tudrin misses, Wall misses, but then the next three guys didn't. Number two, 65, that was Noah Renner. Brought down. That was also Jaquan Taylor. Gain on that. And also Jacob There's Renner in on that tackle. There. Great, great hustle by the entire Blue Devil defense. I was really pleased to see all the guys hustling on that play. There, Nobody there. gave up. Brings up a third and two. And that's another example of even if you aren't the guy to bring the ball carrier yeah, down, sometimes you can slow him up enough to let your, your teammates get there to stop no the play. Yeah, ne ne ball never, ball. Stop, never stop hustling. So this is third no and two. Now, Braden, we mentioned him. He's number seven. He's a quarterback. He's a fourth grader over at Hadley Elementary, and he uh, he loves football and also likes to play baseball and basketball. He's an all-around athlete. We're thrilled that he's, he's joined our program this year. Big Third and two. This is a big up. play, big Rob. To D. Quarterback takes the snap, looking for someone to hand it to. That's Hands a first the down. Up back up the middle. They get the first down. And he's caught right there at the line of scrimmage. Brought Probably down by a passel of Blue Devils. Let's see if I can get some numbers as they get up here. Yeah, that was number 22. Now. That was yeah, Rankin. First down. Springfield's got a first down. It was also down. number 65. That was Noah Renner. Big first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, I, pretty much everybody was in on that play, including number 56, Zachary Martin. Nice play. The this, first down at the 36. You know, this is a this is a big drive for these Wildcats. There's the Blue Devils are hanging on to a very tenuous eight-point lead. The Wildcats can grind out a long touchdown here. That can use up a lot of the time in the, in, the, in the second half. Time that just keeps on moving in some sort of mysterious way. As they hand out to the up back. Oh, nice his play. Way through. He's South met Frank, by number yeah. one, Ben Southfrank. And also, also Renner. Jacob Renner was in on that play. Boy, Renner's really emerging as a real leader on this team, making plays on both sides of the ball. He gets no rest. And he is always hustling. It seems to run at least 15 or 20 yards on every play, and he ends up in a violent, in a violent collision on every play as well. That was a solid defensive team effort there by the Blue Devils. Wildcats. Second and 12, let's call it, after the two-yard loss. Second and eight, I stand and, and something you said is stuck in my mind, Rob. These, this Wildcat team, they are... 
they're hot or cold. They don't really have a, a middle ground there. Either they're going for big gains or so, they're going for losses. Yeah, first gear, fourth gear, right? That's all they've got. Quarterback checks with his backs and the coach. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Calls the signals. There's some motion there. I don't know who they're going to call that on. And there's another flag. That's going to be um, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, that you know, hit there too. old Calvin Fowl pass unfortunately got on uh, the wrong side of the ball. There was going to be an offsides, but then he just got ripped. Yeah, I want to see. Uh, you think they're calling that offsides on the defense there, uh, or are they calling motion? That was, on the that was, it was. Yeah, they're calling illegal motion on the. Oh, it was, no. Now they're, now they're talking. Okay, there you go. Offsides on the defense, and then a dead ball. Personal foul on the. Bobcats. So I think the way the referee, this, you know, we're confused enough up here, and the referees are trying to confuse us even more. Well, let's let's see if we can break this. This is going to result in a ten-yard. Northampton. In a ten-yard penalty, it was five. Five, AJ five yards assessed for the offsides. No but one then told a, me there was going to be this much math. Then there was a personal foul, dead ball the foul, that resulted in a fifteen-yard. Hold on, let me check. The whistle. Fifteen minus five. Yep, you're right. Now. Brings up second and twenty. Or second and what is that, 19 or so, 18? And now there's another whistle. I think the referee blew that just to get himself in position. Okay, second and about 16. Hand off to the up back, looks for some room, gets past South Frank. But not Rankins. Not Rankins. Number 22 on the tackle, number one is in there. Also, Alden Hampton. Bacon got in on that tackle. Owen Schalfo was there just in case he got past everybody else. Justin Rankins. And also Rankins. number 46. 46. Rodriguez. Jonathan Rodriguez. You know, I like the, I like the form that Rankin showed on that tackle. He was in perfect position, wrapped him up, and drove him down. That was a pile driving tackle right there. Yeah, the right side of the defense, the level defense has been rather stout this afternoon. Looks like there's some rain clouds coming in. Let's see if we can uh, finish this game without getting wet. Although this is the first game of a triple header, so. Quarterback takes a snap. An end around. Trying to find some room. Oh, There's South Frank, South Frank again. I'll tell you what, that guy, you know, you know, he, he uh, he's made four or five great tackles here. You know, earlier in the game, he got beat on a long one down the line. That obviously, he wasn't going to let that happen again. That must have fired him up because he's he's been playing determined football since then. I think tenacious is a good word. He's, he's not the biggest player out there, but he's showing a lot of heart. Still open. Getting a lot of tackles. Yeah, and that's number 67, Aiden Peterson, who just reports in the game and coming out is number 72 Lamana. So there's a pair of third graders shuffling in and out. Fourth down for the Wildcats. They're on their own 34 yard line and it looks like they're going to go for it. I like this call. They're they're down. They are. Uh, why not? They're 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 down. As we know the clock's running. They got to do something. That takes a snap. Takes the handoff. There's a little pitch to the that's back, an incomplete and that's pass. an incomplete pass because he threw it forward. Right. So there's a learning lesson. That, that, there, there's a lesson for that quarterback. Had he pitched backwards, that ball would have been live, and there would have been an opportunity to advance the ball, but he pitched it forward. And any sort of pass forward, whether it's underhand or overhand, is considered a forward pass. It hit the ground, therefore it's incomplete. Hamp takes over first and ten. Super job on the part of the Blue Devil defense. And you can see with the Wildcats offense, uh, we talk about how football can be a complicated game. There's lots of things you've got to remember. And sometimes the quarterback has looked a little bit confused out there, not knowing who to hand the ball to on that play, not knowing if it was a pass or a pitch. But this is, this is why they do this, so they can learn how to play the game. So first and 10 for the Blue Devils are going to take over on the Wildcats' 34-yard line. So Coach, Coach Lamont is... Vindicated for his decision not to go for a last time. And Ham takes over first and ten in more favorable field position from whence they last started. And, uh, it's a chess match, Rob. Happen. It's all about position. Tuesday up under center. Takes the snap. There's the handoff. 
Boy, Coos loose in the backfield. There's Rankins looking for some room. Yeah, he's up a little bit because Coos thought he was out of the play, and then realized it's late and he had to keep on blocking. Unfortunately, uh, number, number 22, Rankins found room, but he found room behind him going in the wrong direction. Yeah, that was uh, that was not pretty. That's not one that's going to go on the highlight reel. No. You know, and that you'd say it's hard to get uh, frustrated with him trying to make a play. He's running back. He's going for it. But sometimes just, just – Falling down well, I also is think the best there's, decision. There's, there's a teachable moment there, too, for the quarterback to remind him that even though you've handed off the ball, your responsibilities might not necessarily be over. So that brings up second and let's call it 18. Sudrin breaks the huddle, brings his players up to the line. I formation. There's the handoff, look at the pass, throws the ball up in the air. Oh, the ball They're bounces around. It's finally intercepted. Brought down, brought by, down by Jacob Renner. Well, the interception, Springfield comes up with a haul, but 25 is right there for Northampton. That was a good pass. And the the third just quarter. couldn't bring it in. For anybody's touch. Jacob Renner snuck right in there, though. Well, that was that ball was up there for a long time. Then it bounced, and then it bounced again. And it bounced a third time right into oh, yeah. a defender. Two As we said, had the chance to get it, but the Wildcats player was one of the up with it. 14-6. And that is the end of the third quarter. I saw the official had indicating the end of the quarter, which means we only have one quarter left of running time. That was a huge turnover and gives the Wildcats an opportunity to put together a drive in time to uh, catch the Blue Devils. It, they were down by eight. It would take a touchdown and a successful two-point conversion, but given this, uh, given the explosion of this Wildcat offense, that is not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, we have to hope that the Wildcats First don't get Wildcats. fired up in that play and, and result in a touchdown. Let's see if the, the defense can keep it up. Quarterback takes the snap, hands to the no back, way. wrapped up by big number 65, Noah Renner. Oh, that one. Monster play. That was a big, big play. He gave a little victory dance there Renner. in the backfield, too. Big He's happy to make that tackle. Well, you know, that was a demoralizing hit. Boy, he just Noah stuck him and Noah Renner. drove him into the ground. Had no chance on that one. Hit and wrapped. No, there was some intimidation on that tackle as well. And delivered to the ground. Hey, notice the lights are on here at lights Tudrin on. Field on the grounds of Smith Vocational. It's time for some nighttime football. On the first day of fall, another wonderful day here at Smith Vocational. Well, it High has school. been a spectacular fall, hasn't it? Well, it's the first day, so yeah, it's been well, good. You know, late summer, early okay, fall. Late it's been summer, spectacular. Fall. It's been a spectacular late summer. <laughs> second and second ten. Now. And uh, ten. He's ready to go. A little confusion on the Wildcats offensive line. Here we go. Quarterback calls out the signals. Takes the snap. There's a handoff to the deep back in the eye. Boom! Is that runner hole. again? But then that was yeah, that was Noah Runner again. Right up there he was the one who closed that hole. That Renner is imposing Noah his physicality in this game, man. He is taking over. Boy, a gain of, of five on the play. Boy, both those Renner, Renner brothers are doing a big time job today, aren't they? Doing a great job. And it looks like, uh, let's see. Okay, Shelfo is going in, giving Cam Fountain a little bit of a break. And Alden Bacon's going in to give Jacob Renner a little break. It's third and six for the Wildcats. Third and five, third and six. And Bacon may be in a place where he needs to make a play here. He just came into the game, but I wouldn't be surprised if they bounce one off to that. snap, bobbles it a little bit, looking for some room. No way. wrapped up by Big O Oh, no! The O dog. Fought off the block and gave a big old hug to the running back. No, Owen Jelfo brings up a fourth and five. Great play, but good inside, good inside tackling. The Blue Devil defensive line is stepping up, making a Springfield trying to get something going here. Get back, making a statement out there. Nice job. You see lots of players coming in and out as the coaches do a good job of making sure everybody gets playing time. Fourth down, and let's call it four and a half to go. Look at the. Look at all the Blue Devils on the line there. They're stacking the line. Takes the snap. Hand out to the deep back. There's uh -oh. some room. Into the secondary. I think he might have gotten the first down. He you got the first the down. Then he's there. brought down by a bunch of Blue Devils. Yeah, with Bacon leading the tackle. We knew he was going to need to make a play. Bacon and Shelfo and number 68, Ed Sarafin. So they got the tackle, but the Wildcats got the first down. 
you know, there's a play where the coaches and their enthusiasm and their efforts to try to get everybody in might have created some confusion in the defense. And that could have contributed to that hole, which that was a huge first down. That was a fourth down play. That could have been the ball game had they successfully defended that play. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that it's running time here in the fourth quarter. We never know how much time is left. And while that was the first down, it was only a gain of five. It looked like some motion there, but I didn't get away with that. Running and he's got some room. He's got some room, and there he goes. Got one guy to beat, Tyrese Cox, he's but he's going to make it. All the way. There's the touchdown. You called it, Rob. That fourth scores. down conversion was Great huge. Run by number, looks like 17 or number 12 for Springfield. Great run by Springfield. So now, right Rob, here we room. are late in the fourth quarter. It is now 14 to 12. Quick six for them. The Wildcats need this two-point conversion to tie the game. So Hamp leading 14-12. Springfield's going to be lining up for two points. So we have to hope that the Blue Devils can shake off that last play, this could get tie back the to the basics here on defense, and prevent them from getting two yards into the end zone. That kind of took a little life out of this crowd. It sure did. Well, there's one way to get it back, and that's to stop them here. Play of the game right here, Andrew. Big play now for Ham's defense. Got a hold of him here. Leading two points. This could play could tie the game. Quarterback takes a snap. There's a hand up to the deep back. He no is way! caught and, and he is dropped. No game. Number 65. That was Hampton Noah Renner. The and there to back him job. up was Shelfo and also number 46, there, Jonathan Rodriguez. Now Rob, I'll, I'll give you some credit, Rob, because you were ball. saying that the conversions two two could be the lead. difference in this game. And right now, that, that's, the, that's the lead. It's a two-point conversion. Ham needs to put together a sustained drive here. They don't even need to score. They just need to grind down that clock. 14-12 to 12 after the unsuccessful conversion try. Blue Devils will take over on the 35-yard line, their own 35-yard line. Somehow, I don't think we'll be seeing one of those pass plays on this series of downs. Now, we've, I think we've attempted three, and uh, we're 0 for 3, and in fact, uh, two of those three almost got picked off. Well, one, one of the, the three, three did, did and off, led, yeah. to that, led to that touchdown. So in handling 14-12, the offense comes back in the field. Well, this is an exciting game. Both, both, both teams are working so hard. We're seeing some big plays on offense and defense in this game. It's time for time. It's time for Ham to grind one out. Keep it simple. Well, in order for that to happen, Rob, like we've been saying all game, the offensive line is going to have to do its job. Keep it simple. Keep it in the tackles. What about takes a snap? Nope. Hand off to Renner. Looking for some room on the right hand side. Breaks one tackle. Cuts it back up He's the middle. Still on his feet. That's a gain of about tackles, six. Of five on that. That's just what we needed, Rob. Again, 25, Keeps no that clock going. Hampton. Moves the ball down the field a little bit. It's Good play. Break the 100 yard mark here this afternoon. Have a great game. And I do, I do see the conf the if the, the, the game oh, officials conferring about time. Trying to figure out what to do with number 25 and the Hampton runner. It's nice to know that they might be as confused as we are. Well, the uh, the official on our side of the field seems to be the timekeeper, and obviously the folks over on the Wildcat side are interested in how much time is left. <laughs> Second down and about four to go. Blue Devils break the huddle. Here comes Hampton. Come up to the line. Tudor calls the signals. And the There's what I like. Snap. That's what I like. Run Inside. Right up the middle. The That's to, the to Rankins. He's field. close to the first down mark. I Jersey. think he got it, Rob. Forward progress is going to make it real close. The official from the far side is, is coming over. First down. It's going to be. Call a timeout. I think yeah. they might do a measurement here. That was a good run. Right up the No, middle, that's Rob. a first down. They're going to give him the first down. That is a first down. first down. I love that call. Andrew, that was the kind of that's exactly the kind of play we need. Those inside the tackles, burst ahead, four yards, first down. That's power football. That's that, the, those are the plays that that are you know the most efficient. They're the ones that the timing is easiest to execute. First down, Blue Devils. That also shows confidence in your mind to say, okay, guys. We're going to run right behind you, so you better open up some holes. You know what? And that, that, that confidence, the players feel it, and they rise to the level of expectation. You know, that thrust it's blocking, that, that's line. fun blocking. It's smash hit. mouth football. It's fun to play. Okay. It's fun it's to execute. Tujan takes a snap. There's a handoff to Oh, right nice He's block by 22. Right Rankins with a two. nice block, but runners wrapped up by the Wildcat defender after a gain of about two yards there. So after we talked about how great it was to go in between the tackles, 
another run that's tried to bounce to the outside. And he ran into a linebacker there who was unblocked and resulted in only a two-yard gain. So it keeps the clock moving. Second down and eight to go on the 47-yard line, let's call it, of the Blue Devils. Coach is taking a little extra time in the huddle. Make sure everybody knows what's going on. I've noticed that they've had quick snap counts the last couple of plays. I wonder if they'll try to yeah, you know, draw them off sides. With oh, the, there's off sides. There there's go. off there's sides. He didn't call it. That's the Rankins trying to find some room on the outside. Renner trying to help him out some blocking. Yeah, Cuts it back. Picked up, picked up and no, dropped. They, they do have the off sides on the other side. I can see the flag, flag on the yep. play. Let's see what that's what the call is on that play. You know, number number 13 for the Wildcats was lined up two yards over the line of scrimmage. That had to be an off on the part of the Wildcats. The shaking up on that. After the offsides call on the Springfield Wildcats, the Blue Devils now have a second down and four to go. Late in the fourth quarter, clock is running. What we want to see here, Rob, is a running play that gets us at least a first down to keep that clock moving. Yeah, positive yards here. We don't need a turnover. We don't need a penalty. We need positive yards. Quarterback takes a step. Oh, get inside. The runner. Bobbles it a little bit. That's a good block by Rankins. Renner cuts it back. And he's got a lot of room out there. He's got a lot of room. He got past that one defender. He has the first down. He fumbles. Springfield takes over. Springfield On their own 37-yard line. Renner's hit her and the ball popped loose on that. Springfield has recovered. It was a heck of an individual effort on the part of Renner. Unfortunately, as he was trying to stretch it out, he got a little aggressive, lost control of the ball. Ball popped out. Wildcats take over. That was an untimely turnover on the part of the Blue Devils, given the Wildcats life in this game and given their ability to put together a big time play. That's going to put a lot of pressure on, on the Blue Devils defense. That, was, that wasn't really what we expected, nor what we wanted. No. Somehow, I think number 25, uh, Renner, is going to play this defensive series with a little extra determination. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes the big play. Well, it's a tough thing. There's so many things these third and fourth graders have to learn to play well at football. And you, know, you might want to say, you know what, maybe he should have tried to go down there instead of trying to fight for that extra yard. Well, you, you, you know, again, but that, that play all started because we tried to run it outside early. And then, again, I, I like to see those, those plays inside the tackle in this situation. A little confusion on the Wildcats side right of the now. ball. They're trying to count how Two many players they have. Coach is doing a little moving of the chess pieces on the offensive line. Saying, okay, number 97, you're not on the field now. All right, now we have the proper number, 11 on 11. Everybody takes a snap. Hand off to the deep back. Got some room. Gets to the backfield. Then he's wrapped up. A bunch yeah, of players in on that tackle. I see Renner. I see Rankins, I see Wall. Let's see the who's the one getting up off the ground there. Last one, I think was Shelfo. Was that number 46, Rodriguez no, no, that on that play? Four also, that was Cameron LaFountain. Good team effort, that's a five yard gain. It's a good game by the Wildcats. And now, once uh, again, we don't know how much time's left. The clock is running. Yeah, this is an exciting ball game. This 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 could be the Wildcats' last opportunity for a, for a, a score, and, and a score here would be would be devastating because there just won't be there would, won't be enough time for the Blue Devils to come back. Second and five. Quarterback calls the signals. There's a gives it to the up back on that one. Breaks the first tackle. Tyrese Cox brings him down after the second effort. Someone had him by the ankle. I think Rankins like had his shoe, but unfortunately that wasn't good enough. We needed yeah. more than that, and he was able to stumble forward and get a first down. Good effort. Also, Zach Martinez was in on that play. That is a first down. And who's that reporting in the game? That's number two, number Jaquan two, Taylor, Taylor reporting Jaquan in the Taylor. game. He's going to play safety. And boy, that is going to be a heck of a position for Jaquan because about the 47. You know, he could be he could he could be the uh, player of last resort here on one of those big big hitter plays that have marked this Wildcat offense so far today. First and ten. 47 yard line. Quarterback takes a snap. Hand out to the deep back. Shot up by Will Shaw. 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 Willie, baby, Ooh, nice play. Stopped him. Will just push that would-be blocker aside. And wrapped up that runner. Huge defensive play there. by Shaw. Well done. No Shaw game. That so that'll bring up it. second and Will Shaw, 10. For Northampton. 
Impose your will. Will. And that's the type of play, Rob, that can also get your teammates fired up. Second and ten. The Wildcat quarterback getting everybody set. Calls out the signals. Takes the snap. There's a handoff to the deep back. Looking for some room. He's going backwards. He's going to get around the end. Oh, nice Shelfo play. What a comes play by from Shelfo. the defensive end spot. It, wraps him up after a six-yard gain. That was a tremendous individual effort by that runner. It was a it was a botched handoff. Turned something into made like something out of nothing. But Shelfo was just way second. too determined. Even oh, without a shoe, minutes. he managed to make the tackle. What a great play by uh, by Shelfo on that play. That might have been a game game saving tackle right there by Shelfo. Yeah, you don't expect to see the defensive lineman track down the running back from behind like that. Well, they've got, you know, between between Shaw and Shelfo and Renner, there's some athletes on that offensive line. They're not just big, strong guys, but they can run, and they showed it there. So they did get a first down on that play, but they did not, as we said, get the touchdown. I'm a little bit confused. Let's see, the referees are blowing the whistle. Yeah, that was, was not, that that, really that, that was not a first down. That was not a first down. No. Those chains set in the sideline. That's a good. That's a good try by the chain gang on the other side, though. You just kind of move them and see if anybody notices. There we go. That's 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 there the right go. outcome. Third and let's call it three yards to go. And third down, Wildcats. Then. All right. I, I think I think we're all set now. Blue Devils defense. There's now. the whistle to start the clock. Whatever it takes a snap. There's a handoff. Up the middle, nowhere to go. If you're gonna face the, left, the right side of the defensive line, Shaw, there was Shaw in there, Redder. there was Shelfo in there. That's a, the trio that you're not oh gonna no. get past. No siree. So here we go, Rob. Fourth down. We've been here before. Three yards to go. We've been here before. Late in the fourth quarter. We've been here before. And I think there might be an injury. All right, Rob, here we go. Fourth down, two yards to go. Springfield Wildcats down 14 to 12 against the Blue Devils. Blue Devils stop them here, they win the game. That's what it boils down to. So if you're the Springfield coach, you have a little bit of a problem because your conservative plays haven't really done anything. So you might have to open it up a little bit here. You know, I, I think we're going to see the fullback number 17 on this carry. He's been their most dynamic running back. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to get one to the outside. Quarterback calls the signals, takes the snap. Hand out to no. the deep back. No. And he is met no. there by Renner. number 65, Renner. No. The convert, fourth down conversion, no good. Hey, that was number 68, Seraphin, in on that play as well. That was Renner. That was Seraphin. That was Rankins. That was no. That was Blue Devils ball. First in 10, right in midfield. Ham takes over. And you see the defenders very fired up after that play. And they should be. That has Ham. been has developed into a strength of this Blue Devil Pee Wee team is that defensive line and the defense in general. Ham takes over first in 10. They are on their own 45-yard line. They didn't quite get to midfield, but they are happy to have, have the ball. They want to grind the time down. A couple of first downs here, ball game over. And you know who has to really feel good about that is Jacob Renner. I'm sure he was disappointed after that fumble. His teammates bailed him out there. And, you know, and Renner's going to have an opportunity to make up for that. If he can just uh, hang on to that ball, keep between the tackles, positive yards, grind, grind, grind. We don't, we don't need to score. We need possession. We need a first down. So the Blue Devils take over an offense on their own 45-yard line. Tudrin takes the snap. He fumbles it, falls down on it. There's a timeout. And that's the game. Judging by the reaction of the players. Final score, the Northampton Blue Devils 14. Hold on before I sign off. There's a little bit of confusion out here. You know, I want to make sure we're all set. I'm calling it back on the field. I don't know. It's not a game. Whistles went out. See, Rob, what's happening here, the if I may venture a guess, folks. it has to do with how many timeouts the Wildcats have. And I honestly never know how many timeouts the teams have. It seemed like they have a bunch. And right before the Blue Devil out. players started celebrating, I did hear someone say timeout red. 
So now I I don't know what they're doing. Is that the game? Quite, quite honestly, I'm not sure why the coaches are concerned. The Blue Devils have the ball. It's only second down. If there's only a minute left, I mean, there's really not much more they're going to do anyway. So they're lining up for the post-game handshake. I guess it's official now, folks. Mm. Final score, Blue Devils 14, Springfield Wildcats 12. Super win for the, for the Blue Devils. Congratulations, Coach. Good game, Rob.